How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. Bit of a different one. 18.3 buffers. Normal higher level students will just need to know the action of a buffer. Higher level students that did option B will also need to know how to calculate the pH of a buffer. That's us. We need to do it. Let's go. Alright, so topic 18.3 and B7, this is actually volume 11. We look at the components and action of a buffer and then we look at some calculations of a buffer solution. So for 18.3, you need to know the composition and action of a buffer. For B7, you need to know about amino acids acting as buffers and pH buffer calculations. Now a buffer system is one that counteracts either the addition or a base, keeping the solution within a narrow range of pH. So what that means is that we can mix a weak acid and its conjugate base and we form a buffer. We can also mix a weak base and its conjugate weak acid to form a buffer. But a buffer must have the weak acid and the weak base as its conjugate pair. It must have both in it. So we can, we can make an acidic buffer by preparing equal amounts of ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. Both of those are a conjugate pair and we have the weak acid and the weak base in the solution which makes it a buffer. If we write out the equation for both of these things, we have ethanoic acid which ionizes in water to produce the ethanoate ion and H3O+, and sodium ethanoate would dissociate into the ethanoate ion and Na+. So what we've done is we've now created a solution that has the weak acid, the ethanoate ion, and the weak base, sorry, the ethanoic acid, and the weak base, ethanoate ion, in the solution. So we have our acid and our conjugate base pair both present in the solution. That can act as a buffer because if we add some H+, then one of those species will be able to react with the H+. And in fact, because the CH3COO- the ethanoate ion, is a weak base, it will accept those protons. So it will react to try and reduce the concentration of H+, to form ethanoic acid. And we know that ethanoic acid is a weak acid and it only ionizes to about 3%. So it's going to reduce that pH change. If a base is added, well, we've got the ethanoic acid, which is an acid that can start to neutralize the base. Don't forget that just because it's a weak acid doesn't mean it won't neutralize all the base that is added. As long as we have enough of it, it will keep neutralizing that base until it's all gone. In either case, the addition of either an acid or a base to a buffer will limit the overall change in pH. So the concentration change of the H3O plus will be quite small. If we needed to make a basic buffer, we need to have a weak base with a salt of a strong acid. So for example, if we have NH3 and NH4Cl, that is NH3 the base, and the salt, NH4+, plus, has come from the addition of HCl. So we've added HCl to NH3 to form NH4Cl. But in the solution, we have ammonia that can accept a proton from water acting as a base to form NH4+, plus and OH-. Minus. We know that it's a weak base, so most of the ions in the solution will still be NH3. NH4 plus ammonium is a weak acid and it could donate a proton to water to form hydronium and then an ammonia ion. Uh, no, sorry, an ammonia molecule. So if we have the addition of acid to this buffer solution, well we have the base, the weak base, ammonia, that could react with it to form ammonium, hence reducing the pH change. If we add in a base, we've got the weak acid ammonium to react with the OH- to form water and NH3. So either way, we've got a species that can react with the acid or the base. They're a conjugate pair of each other, which makes this a buffer, and it will resist pH changes. So a common question for IB is to look at to a mixture of two chemicals and to work out whether or not it's a buffer. Remember, a buffer must contain a mixture of an acid and its weak base, or a base and its weak acid conjugate pair. So in the first one, we have K2CO3 
and KHCO3. So we have the carbonate ion and the hydrogen carbonate ion. So we have our conjugate base and our acid. So this is indeed a very simple buffer. We've got both of those in the solution. The one on the right though can be a little bit challenging. We've got NH3 ammonia and we've got nitric acid. Now, are those conjugate pairs? Well, no, they're not conjugate pairs, but they've given us different moles of both of them. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. And in fact, it does. Because if we have NH3, that can form ammonium ions in water. And if we have HNO3, then that we know that's a strong acid, so that would completely ionize in water to form H3O plus and NO3 minus. Now, the different number of moles, one's an acid and one's a base. So what's actually going to happen in this reaction is we're going to form the salt via a reaction. We have 0.1 moles of HNO3 and 0.2 moles of NH3. Now in a reaction, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So the HNO3 is actually going to react with the NH3 to form some NH4+. We're going to form water in this reaction as well, which is why I've crossed off H plus and OH minus. So all of the acid will be reacted. Our NH3 will be reduced to 0.1 mole, but our NH4 will have increased to 0.1 mole because we've had a reaction occur with the nitric acid. So that means that we now have a solution that contains 0.1 mole of NH3 and 0.1 mole of NH4. Now this makes it an actual buffer solution. After that reaction, we will have formed a buffer because we have the conjugate acid and the base in solution. So amino acids can also act as buffers in a solution. Their Zwitter ions at their isoelectric point contain the NH3 functional group and the C00- functional group. The amine section can act as an acid and act as a base and accept a proton, and the carboxy group can act as an acid and donate a proton. So if we added some base to an amino acid at its isoelectric point, what would happen is the, H, the NH3 would donate a proton to the base and we would form a negatively charged species. If we added an acid to the solution, the C00- section of the Zwitter ion would accept a proton and act as a base. So our amino acids can also act as buffers in solution and by extension, so can proteins. Okay, if we're asked to calculate the pH of a buffer, a buffer solution, we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is in section one of the data book. And we need to work out either the pH or the pOH and work out if they're asking us about a base or an acid buffer. A little trick is if, if the concentration of acid and salt or the base and the salt is equal, then we can simply say that the log 10 of one is zero, so the pH equals the pKa. If we're asked to calculate the pH of a buffer solution, we're usually given the concentration of the acid and the concentration of the salt. So we just need to determine what kind of buffer solution it is. Here we have methanoic acid, so it's an acidic buffer solution. So we can rewrite the equation and then substitute in some of our values. We were given the Ka value of methanoic acid, so we'd need to find the pKa by doing 10, uh, negative log of base 10 of the Ka. Once we find the pKa, we sub that into the question. We've also got the concentration of the salt, which was given, and the concentration of the acid. So we're able to calculate the pH of this buffer just by subbing in a few numbers. This is probably the easiest case of a calculation of a pH that you'll get. The second type of pH calculation might be to calculate the amount of acid or base required to make a buffer. So a student needed to make one decimeter cubed of a pH buffer five, starting with ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. How much of each compound should the student mix together? Assume no volume change takes place. Again, we're using an acid buffer because we start with an ethanoic acid solution. So we're going to use the acid version of the equation. And we set it up in exactly the same way. The information that we've been told though is the pH we want is five. The pKa of ethanoic acid, we can use the data book to look up. 
and then we need to work out the concentration of our salt to work out our amount. We've been given the concentration of the acid, which is 0.1 molar, and because we will need a decimeter cubed of it, we'll work with one liter of that solution. Taking the 4.76 to the other side, we're left with 0.24 equals log 10 of the concentration of salt over 0.1. Now to solve this equation, what I need to do is take the inverse of the logs. So 10 to the power of 0.24 equals the concentration of the salt divided by 0.1. Now I can transpose the equation to find the concentration of the salt that I need, which is 0.17 molar. Because we're working in one litre, the number of moles of the salt will therefore equal the concentration, so 0.17 moles. And then now I'm in the position to find the mass. I know the number of moles, so I need to work out the mass of sodium ethanoate by doing mole times molar mass. So I look up the molar masses, I multiply my, my moles, and then I can work out the mass or how many grams I need to dissolve into our one liter of ethanoic acid solution. And in this case, it's equal to 14.3 grams. Alright, some top tips for volume 11. What is a buffer? Remember to refer to the equations in the data book and for multiple choice, look for the trick in terms of the concentrations. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more and I'll see 